Andrew Loss. And I'm Matt Carley. And this is Modularis, the Modular Mouse. So uh, my, my name is Andrew Loss, like I said, and I started in technology really in ninth grade when I took a intro programming class and a technology one class. Um, from there, I took a CAD class in 10th grade and another one in 11th grade and got my CSWA certif certification. Um, I plan on going to CSU and I still don't know what I'm studying, but <laughs> it's, it's getting there. Uh, I'm Matt Carley. I took CAD classes with, in ninth grade, 10th grade with Mr. Combs. And then it'll, and I earned my CSWA and my CSWP in those two years. And then in 11th grade, I decided to go to CCIC and I took a product design course with or to my teacher, Mr. Clinton, and I learned a lot more about like how to implement the ideas that I learned in CAD into like building actual things. And I also plan to go to CSU and study mechanical engineering. And so our goal for this project was to create a mouse that everyone can use, no matter if you're right-handed, left-handed, you big, small hands, you need an ergonomic mouse or yeah, like certain medical issues and you can't use a typical mouse. You want a mouse that can fit anyone's hand. So that's what we designed. We wanted a mouse that was, so our idea was to have a small mouse that could be portable and used anywhere, a coffee shop or anywhere. But then you have a bigger case that can be put onto this mouse for any specific need that you want. And our logo, we want to reflect this idea of modularity but the name modularis means modular in Latin. But our, our logo was broken, or is broken up into multiple different pieces, as you can see. And that's to represent the idea of these different modules on our mouse. And then plus, the light blue is to represent the innovativeness of our mouse that you can, the out, especially the outside, light blue is the fact that it's innovative and it changes. You can change it to whatever case you want. While the inside is struck is like sturdy, you know it's always going to be a good mouse. You don't have to worry about it breaking or anything like that. So, my objectives for this project were, I wanted to work on completing a long-term project. I've worked on projects before, but never really something this long-term. And I wanted to commit to a project. And on top of that, I wanted to improve my time management skills and improve my knowledge of just the whole manufacturing process of technological goods. My objectives for this project were, well, I wanted to first learn to present confidently. I wanted to be able to get up in front of the stage like I am now and give a presentation like I am now, kind of. <laughs> and then I also wanted to become versed in electrical literacy and electrical techniques. Before I started this project, I had little to zero experience with elect electronics, really. So by doing this, I was able to learn and build on that. I also wanted to research and understand how a computer mouse works. I, I never really understood it. Like I, <laughs> ever since before this class, I never knew how a mouse worked. But uh, I was able to learn and become an expert on it through this. I also wanted to become better at managing my time like NIAC because I'm a chronic procrastinator. <laughs> and I actually wanted to create a product that can be used. So how does a mouse work? A mouse is creates a recoupable position by first sending a having an LED reflects light onto the ground. From there, the light is then reflected back into a CMOS or a camera, which takes hundreds of photos per second. And determining on the light change in those photos, uh, it translates to, to the computer, either through a wire or through Bluetooth, and it is able to move the mouse with it. So, because we're building a mouse, mechanics and feel are a huge part of it. And so we started out our mechanics review research by just looking at many different maps. We want to look how the scroll wheels work, how the clickers work, how did the how if you click on the top, how does that actually activate the switch? On top, on on addition to that, some mice have other buttons, some mice have DPI buttons, some mice have side buttons. So we want to look at all that. But also importantly, we also want to look at ergonomics because if a mouse is not filled in someone's hand, they're not going to use it. And so we looked at mice that had a shape that really fits the human hand, and we looked at how did they design that mouse, and on top of that, why did they design it like that? Our advisor list, our final advisor list, ended up with uh, Paul Clinton as our, one of our expert advisors. He is a 
a CCI teacher, uh, and a product design expert. We also have Michael White, who is in the audience today, and he is a uh, elect electrical engineer, and he is also one of our expert advisors. Um, we also have Ethan Blair, who is one of our support advisors. He was a big help with soldering and uh, really just guiding me through like learning how to do that. Uh, we also have Graydon Sears, who is there for moral support. He's a support advisor. And uh, Jamal Hartley, who is also in the audience, and is nice that, who is an electronics hobbyist with a computer science degree. You know, getting back to our project, um, one of my first, so we decided that I would take on all the work on the mechanic side, and Andrew would take on all the work on the electronics side. And so my first step on the electronics side was to review SOLIDWORKS. On the mechanics side was to review SOLIDWORKS. Because I hadn't really touched SOLIDWORKS all summer since I used it in 11th grade. So my first goal was to just look at some basic tutorials. I watched some basic tutorials on some more basic sides of SOLIDWORKS, and then I worked up to more advanced sides with servicing and stuff like that. And then on top of that, I also went back to my previous projects and I corrected them. Anything that I, the, there were errors in a lot of my old projects from ninth and 10th grade. I went back in them and I tried to work through all those errors so that I could really gain an understanding of the program, a better understanding of the program than I did in previous years. So to apply our research in the early, early, uh, in early the year, we just bought a simple mouse that was, I think, $5 at Walmart. Uh, we just wanted to cr crack and open the mouse and actually see the components that we were reading about and watching videos about through our research. Um, as we opened this, though, we noticed it was wireless, which we liked. We liked the wireless aspect and how uh, easy it was to use. But this also had non-rechargeable batteries, so just double A's, and it was really low quality electronics. Um, so we weren't going to use that for our mouse. So we wanted to find uh, the right mouse internals. Uh, this brought us to the Razer Mongo wireless mouse. This mouse is rechargeable with a uh, lithium ion battery and it is wireless, which is just what we needed. It also is also capable of high DPI, so lots of sensitivity in it. And it has a lot better quality of electronics than the last mouse that we find, or that we purchased. Um, to begin with our practice and applying our research, we got two cheaper mouse because we did not want to dive right into our more expensive mouse and ruin it somehow. So we got these two mouse, which were $15 each, uh, and they're just simple Logitech mouse. I got these because they were simple and easy to tear apart, and they had a com more complex PCB, which was more similar to the Razer mouse and not similar to the first mouse we took apart at all. Um, I was able to familiarize myself with the mouse components and the electronics, and I was able to uh, familiarize myself with uh, just the electronic aspect and combining these two uh, parts, or these two mice into one. So when we finally, finally got our Razer mouse, we were able to crack it open. And we found the lithium ion battery, which has a lot of juice in it. We have a lot of life for uh, our mouse. And it, we also found out that it was a lot more complex than the other mouse that we have. This mouse had eight, eight connectors for the scroll wheel and five connected, or and three uh, connected connections for each switch. So uh, to, for our final project, I, was, I would have to take into account all of that. We were also able to measure this to aid in modeling the mini model. So for my elect electrical practice and prototyping, I first started by simply learning how to solder. Ethan Blair was a big help with this, and uh, he let me practice with some of his electronics that he didn't need anymore. Uh, I was then able to desolder the switches from the PCB of one of the mice, and I was able to connect it to wires and make it easier to, to switch mice switch the switches out and put in multiple different kinds of switches into one switch input. This was, uh, this was our, uh, 
this we did I did this to prove the concept of switches working with uh, other switches working with like an original mouse. So the original mouse, we took the switches off, and we had the other mouse, which we were able to implement those switches into the original mouse, which proved that it's not like uh, exactly custom for each signal being sent. Um, the prototype I created doesn't look very pretty, but it works. So there's four switches. There's uh, two breadboards on the side. As you can see, the red uh, panels on the side which will allow me to connect switches, uh, other switches, and the two bone wires, which are the switches. So allowing it for four total switches on this one mouse. Uh, this was our proof of concept, and it really let us uh, dive into the soldering and desoldering of the actual mouse without worrying about messing it up. Uh, this was function, and uh, it, it worked just like the plan. Okay. While Andrew was working on the elect electrical side of the project, my whole focus was, as I said before, on the mechanical side. So I first began working on a prototype. And this was my first prototype, and I'm going to be honest with you, I think it sucks. So I did not use that prototype because all of this designing was just pretty much out of my imagination. I just imagined what a miniature mouse would look like. It just kind of started designing it, which is not the way you want to go about this. I learned that the hard way. So on my next go around, I didn't do that. I used, I decided on Amazon. I bought some foam, some polyurethane foam, which I learned from my um, product design class, which is, is really good for modeling prototypes because it's hard, but it's also easy for you to shave and cut. So we cut it up in our classroom, we shaved it down, and we got into the, sh the shape of what we wanted for our mini module, and then we handed it around to our classmates. We wanted to see how they felt about it. What did they like and what did they dislike about the shape of this mouse? And we took those criticisms into account, and I created my second prototype, which you don't see the top. The top is in the next slide, but right here you can see that I before I like even designed like the fur the full ergonomic feel, I went back and I wanted to make sure that the, that it actually was functioning. So I made sure that the screw holes were in the right place because in the black prototype they weren't in the right place because I made it up. This one I measured things and I made sure that the camera the hole for the um, CMOS for the CMOS to pick up the light was in the right place. And it looks weird. That is out of my center. But one thing, one cool thing I did learn about mice is that if you look at the the PCB, the board inside, none of their cameras are symmetrical, and that's because they make it seem they they make the mouse like the illusion of it being symmetrical by curving sides and stuff like that. And so when I first designed this, it was directly in the center, and when I put the PCB in, that was completely off. Nothing worked. So I had to make it very off center. It looks weird, but or mouse is, has to be symmetrical, so. Here you can see a final model. I made a few more changes to the, um, like just dimensions of the pads and stuff like that. And I made the, the walls higher, and I also added some clicker arms, you'll see that coming up, but I added some arms for like the, the top of the mouse, the clickers, to actually hit the switches, and just correctly positioning. So our mini module was not too complicated of uh, ideas, but it was just a lot of work. So to get all of these wires I uh, connected to the module, I had to have 14 total connections. Um, I did this by putting them all to a breadboard and putting solid connections in the breadboard so that I would just be able to uh, t touch uh, pins to it and it would connect with the top line. Um, the pro problem with this was I had to do a lot of splicing of wires. Um, all eight wires for the uh, for the scroll wheel had to be spliced and extended, and that doesn't include the other half of it where I did it on the other module. Um, uh, the, I also added the six wires going to each pin, or three to each pin, six in total. 
uh, which brought the total connections up to 14. Now moving on to our case module. <coughs> For a project, though we did say that we wanted a multi multitude of different cases, we wanted to focus on just making one case for this project. So we decided to just make a generic mouse case, the generic mouse, and we wanted the case, we, the functionality we wanted the case module, because our mini module only had the ability for click, to click and move around, our case module, we wanted it to have a scroll wheel. But on top of that, we also wanted to be able to click because a mouse without clicking is not a mouse. So this is where the idea of, in the electronic prototyping of having four switches connect to one mouse, it was to prove it was so that this concept could work because our mouse has four switches connected to one mouse. The case module has two separate switches, and the mini module has two of its own switches, but they all have to connect to the same board. On top of that, our case module had to hold our mini module in place because our, case, our design was to put the mini module inside the case module. And so it had to reliably hold it so that when you're using it, you're not worrying about it falling out and you're not worrying about connections falling out. So here was my first prototype. Uh, some pros of it, I was, it was a lot more ergonomic. The shape, compared to the mini module, the mini module is not meant to be ergonomic, but this one was designed with the fact of you using it in a long-term process, so it had to fit the person's hand well. And on top of that, it had, as you can see right here, you can't really see it, there's a little platform right there for the electronics. All the electronics are separate from where the case module is being held. It was a lot more organized. And then some cons of it were designing it, just some basic design flaws. I forgot to design an access panel so we could put the electronics in. But I had to fix that and move on, so we'll be on the next slide. But on this first prototype, I just, completely forgot to design the fact that you need to put the electronics in or for the mouse to work. And also, the mouse, mini mouse, um, the component, the, co the compartment for the miniature mouse was too small in this, in this um, prototype. So when I fixed it, I added a little access panel. This comes off and you can reattach it. And that's how we were able to put the electronics in. You can see the, the the clipper arms right there. And then the compartment is a lot bigger. And on top of that, I also added space for a pin so that the pins from the case module can connect to the mini module so that the mouse works perfectly right. So this was the electronics for the module part of the mouse, so the bigger mouse. Um, like, again, like the uh, mini module, I had to do 14 more connections so that I could connect this module to the mini module. I did this by using pogo pins, which are regular pins that have a spring in them so that the tip will push down and instead of just being a solid uh, pin. Um, this let it be easier and just feel more quality in the actual uh, process and the design. Um, uh, the 14 con connections are the exact same as the module, where there's eight going from the scroll wheel to this uh, breadboard. And then there's also six for the switches going to the breadboard, uh, all connecting to the other breadboard through the bubble lines. Now, we came the process for testing. Uh, our video, we couldn't get our video to actually load onto this, so that, there was a video and we were able to connect the pins from the case module to the miniature module and the scroll wheel was working and the clips were working. We could also show it back there. But for some reason, our video would just not load. So, this is what the final modulator mouse looked like. Uh, as you can see, the electronics fit just fine in the main module uh, as we planned. And the uh, electronics also fit in the module just fine. Um, some roadblocks we ran into was actually finding the electronics. So before we started this project, we wanted to go with a custom-built electronic board, uh, like custom PCB and everything. But uh, after some research, we found out that finding all these microelectronic parts was extremely hard, and that the shipping was uh, everywhere. Like we couldn't find a day that it would actually come here. 
So uh, we decided to go with a pre-built uh, PCB board, which is why we chose the Razor mouse. And uh, we just decided to uh, tamper with that and change everything how we wanted to from the already working mouse. Um, some of my roadblocks when it came to designing was uh, just SOLIDWORKS errors. I, I don't know if anyone here works with SOLIDWORKS, but SOLIDWORKS errors are annoying. And I had a lot of them when it came to surfacing things that I thought would logically work, just flat out didn't, and I had to find workarounds. And a lot of these came in design the case module because there's a much more ergonomic mouse and used a lot more surfacing techniques. And on top of that, 3D printing errors, just access to printers, some printers we printers we thought we'd have access to went down, and so we had to find different access to different printers. And it worked out eventually, but also just print fails. Sometimes print just fails, and it's because you have the settings wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it other than just reprint it. Uh, this was our timeline. Uh, our timeline changed extensively throughout the entire process. Um, basically, our research, we completely underestimated it. Uh, we thought that since it's just a mouse, it would be simple, like a couple, couple of tutorials and you're good, but uh, it wasn't. Uh, we have to do, I have to do a lot of research on electronics and really how that worked. Uh, and I had to do a lot of practice with um, SOLIDWORKS. Yeah. On top of that, we had just prototyping delay, just, as I said, delay in getting your prints and being able to act and being able to measure them and test them, and also just yeah that, and we got to the point where we finalized and we finished the modules. And our original timeline, we had we wanted to be able to maybe start creating different modules, but we never got to. But for the future. To take this process of pro this project further, we want to add more modules, as I said, modules for every single type of hand, and we also wanted to switch to a smaller mini module. Our PCB of our mini module was already pretty big, which limited the size that our mini module could actually be. So in the future, we would choose, and we would look for a smaller PCB so that our mini module could really be the smallest or even the flattest we could possibly get it so that we have a lot more freedom in what cases can be made. Implementing more functionality would also be quite simple since we already have our proof of concept with a module working, adding more functionality to a uh, original mouse, which is our mini module. Yeah. So, here's our bibliography. And are there any questions? have weights in them, uh, but for ours we wanted it to be more versatile versatile for everybody and more like uh, just uh, mobile. So we didn't add any weights and the material we just we used, we didn't make it completely solid, keeping it lightweight and making sure that you could take it anywhere. Wait, before I wanted to add to that question also, with the, with the ability to be modular, because our mini mouse is not designed for games designed for just taking it to a coffee shop and getting some work done, but we, our mouse has the ability to add different modules onto it. So you can have a weighted module, and you can also have a module that's full of holes so that it's really lightweight. And so you really have the customizability on what you, what, how, how weighted you want your mouse to be.
Any other questions? So one of the things you all said your mouse had was a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Yes. Where was your access point? <laughs> <laughs> that is a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of our setbacks. In terms of the mechanical, in terms of the design of the cases, we did not get to being able to, we were able to figure out how to put in the charger, but we did leave space for that to be added in the future, and that was based on where the charger was on the PCB and just the sizing of our mini module already. If we were to add it to it, our mini module would be a lot higher and would throw up the sizing off our case. And so that was that that factors into the idea of we want us we want a smaller PCB so that we have more freedom in how that charges. Angela. With a smaller size PCB, would the would there be fears of limited functionality and usage? Because um, so usually larger components are better or have more power. So uh, as long as the original mouse, so for what we used, we made sure that the Razer Mambo wireless that we used had uh, functionality for scroll wheel, if there was enough for two extra side buttons and DPI changing button that we didn't get to, but uh, but we, there, were, there was room to implement it uh, in it. But if we wanted to use a smaller board, we would just have to make sure that uh, there was functionality for uh, what you would want in the module, or you would have to uh, pro go into it and program it. 